Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, a Monday edition of uh, the Access of uh, nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great weekend, a good trading day, and hopefully everybody is just happy, right? Happy and uh, go lucky. So if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for finding us, for tuning in, spending a couple minutes uh, with us. Uh, if you can be just so kind and just take one second. Uh, out of your time just to click uh, the like button, share, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. Thank you very much. So let's talk about the market. So after last week, incredibly aggressive and volatile Friday, first we had the massive sell-off and then we had the massive rally uh, within the last you know 45 minutes, an hour into the close. Like if you watched the video on the weekend, we talked about there's going to be a potential chop. And the reason why we discussed this, because a lot of names, because of that initial sell-out, because of that uh, later rally, were stuck in the middle of their channels. And that was a very, very big deal. And when you have stocks trading in the middle of their channels, well, that's what's going to happen. It's, it's, a, it's a coin flip because they have to desperately get back to either the top of the range, right, to take out supply to go higher, or the bottom of the range to take out demand. Uh, and go lower. And if you look at the majority of the day, it, it, it really did play out um, like we kind of talked about throughout the day. You had the Dow uh, down 115 points, you had the S&P up five points, and you had the NASDAQ up uh, 93%, uh, 93 points. And the point was majority of names were either red or green, right? When you're trading tech, when you're trading beta names, uh, mega cap technology names, you want them to be uniform, okay? They trade in a tribe. You want them to either all be green or you want them to all be red and say half are green, half are red, which gave it the Christmas tree effect, which gave it the chop that we talked about that we knew we were going to uh, expect for today's trading session. The good news was we can always find channels. That's the whole point of trading pivots. You don't need, you know, you don't need majestic uh, you know, you don't need majestic daily charts to confirm uh, to take advantage of pivots. That's the whole point of trading from channel to channel, supply to supply, and demand to demand. Uh, there was numerous bounce spots today. Uh, there was a couple of daily uh, channel breaks. We'll get to the pivots in a second. But the most important part was just like Friday, we were ready for the pull, right? Potential pull. Today, we were ready for a chop and whatever came with it. And the most important part is just like Friday's session, it was organic, right? Whether the stock market is going down, the stock market is going up, or going through a distribution, aka chop, you, it's, you want things to be organic. The one thing that was not organic today, or two things that were not organic today, was the New York Stock Exchange had a bunch of malfunctions. What was the last time anybody looked at Berkshire Hathaway? I think it's BRK.A, correct? think so, right? Berkshire Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway, there was some sort of glitch in the stock today and the stock dropped like a lot of New York Stock Exchange stocks today, which became very, very inefficient. A lot of traders thought they were taking advantage of that dip. The problem was just like, um, just like we saw during the flash crash day uh, years ago on the NASDAQ, your, your, your trade's probably going to get broken, so I wouldn't be in a hurry to make sales because if you do make sales and your trades got broken, you're going to be naturally short off that level. So my advice, if you did catch anything today that had kind of a flash crash, whatever the case may be, give it a couple of days. Don't sell it. It's the way you're, you're in it such a, uh, such a uh, advantageous level. There's no reason to sell it, but I'm, if I'm a betting man, I'm not you're probably going to get your trade broken. So the last thing you want to do is sell the stock at that level, freaking out, and then realize two days later, your buy got broken. So just in case you were uh, trading these things or whatever the case may be, just do yourself a favor. At least speak to your broker. Give it a couple of days because if, do, if they do break the trade, you're going to have a very, very big problem, especially if the stock uh, starts to appreciate. The other big story today was the GameStop saga. The funny thing is, we actually had actually had GameStop on the watch list, and then you see uh, a tweet that came out over the weekend that Roaring 
pity, uh, roaring kitty, right? He bought like $200 million worth of stock. God knows where he got the 200 million, but hey, God bless. He bought $200 million worth of stock. The stock went up incredible today. It was up 48% today. He made like $85 gazillion. I'm not trying to pocket watch another human being, but it's very impressive. Uh, in the middle of the day, you had Morgan Stanley come out, who uh, I think they own E-Trade now, right? And the, this, and the headline was, E-Trade is considering removing this roaring kitty guy uh, off their platform on concern for potential stock manipulation. I don't know. It's pretty crazy, but kudos to him. Uh, he made a lot of money on this thing. And the options market was kind of spitting some venom as well. There was two notable notable bets I saw today. Somebody bet 982000 in the middle of the day for the 43 weeklies. And a really big bet came in for five hundred grand for the June 21st $100 expiration. So I think this story has still not found its ending uh, after the close. I think Roaring Kitty just, uh, I think, updated his position as well. So anyway, the point is, this is a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of moving parts going on. Um, a lot of people crying foul play. The brokers are trying to, uh, you know, there's some E-Trade is trying to figure out what the hell is going on. They try to, they're trying to uh, put themselves in arm's way, potential any uh, manipulation. But yes, GameStop is still uh, doing its thing. And today, out of hell of a move, uh, despite the sell-off off uh, the open. Other than that, business as usual, uh, NVIDIA continues to uh, grind higher. Again, like I've been saying for, for you know, the last four or five days, use dips. Use dips to get long this thing. Uh, gave us a nice dip today into the bottom of the range here for a little bit of cash flow. And it's just grinding. It's just grinding back to last week's highs. You have um, July, the, excuse me, we have June 7th is the split date. Okay, it looks like they're going to try to run this thing up. Again, they continue uh, to come in with the 1,200 weeklies, the 1,210 weeklies, uh, 1250s we saw for for the next couple of weeks. So this stock is still being uh, bid up on all uh, dips. Uh, Apple had a beautiful breakout today. I think we talked about Apple uh, on the weekend video. It's one of the very few uh, beta names that is you know did not sell off and is sitting above their channels. Give a pretty nice move today. The one stock, the one stock that deserves our attention. Okay, and it's been kind of an afterthought in the last several weeks because everything else has been going uh, so gangbusters is Meta, okay? As you can see here, Meta is just planting its flag underneath this light blue line. Everybody see this light blue line, guys? This represents the 50-day moving average. Uh, if you're brand new to the channel, nothing bullish happens below the 50-day moving average, and most things don't happen bearish above the 50-day. So Meta we saw today, not even today, last week also, we saw some 500 call buyers come in. Uh, we saw some 500 bets being come in on the 614 expiration, the June 21st expiration, some July expiration. The key with Meta, and it's still, you know, it's still not imminent, but the key with Meta is it needs a close above the 50 day. Once it gets above the 50 day, it's going to start a multi day, multi week uh, run. You can go through any stock, literally any stock and see what happens when they get above the 50 day. It's usually going to put in a nice rally and any stock is below the 50 day. It's probably going to produce a pretty good sell off. So this is the one um, that I'm definitely focusing on this week, whether it comes this week or confirms this week, we don't know, right? We don't know, but we always have to be uh, prepared. So we are not that far away, not that close, but not that far away from the 50 day reclaim. At least now we're starting to get options flow the 500, uh, 500 short-term expiration. Um, I've always maintained institutional money flow comes first, and then the price action uh, comes after. That's what she said. But the most important part is understanding the importance of this 50-day moving average. And once it gets above, that is a major green signal. And if any close above the 50-day, again, you can see how much room we have uh, to the top of the channel. Uh, Tesla continues to do absolutely nothing. Gave us a trade today. Uh, actually, you know, gave us a trade today. You know, that nice little scalp at the open. But the point is, again, it just continues to go sideways. You saw today 185 weeklies come in. We saw some 170 puts come in. We saw some 167.50 puts come in. We saw some uh, July 200s come in. We saw some 
uh, 160s come in on the downside. So the stock is flatlining. It's literally flatlining. There's absolutely no edge. Just when you think the stock might wake up, it dies. Just when you think it's about to die, it wakes up. So again, the, the game of patience continues uh, within this name. Uh, other names that are, you know, just sitting there, right? Just absolutely sitting here uh, is Amazon cannot get its, you know, cannot get its uh, mojo. Uh, AMD cannot get its mojo. Again, another sideways action. Uh, SMCI today uh, broke down, continues to break down once it put in that, uh, that it put in that um, inverted hammer and started putting the lower highs and lost the 50 day. Well, that's what happens when you lose the 50 day. Uh, bear market action comes into play. Um, you know, names, for example, you know, names, for example, like Coinbase, you know, doing a nice little distribution above the 50-day moving average up there, gave us a couple of uh, nice days last week. But the most important part is continue to look for the stocks which strength into weakness, into rising support. So let me give you guys uh, some names that I am watching for tomorrow. So look at NVEX. Right, we talked about NVAX two weeks ago above the fifteen dollar level. It's been a big, big runner. Uh, again, this is a perfect example of a stock that if it gives you weakness at the open, you want to take advantage and buy dips into into rising support because what, what happens is they are going to buy the stock and 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 defend the rising support. That's what happens with a lot of strong stocks. Um, look at names, for example, like Chewy. Right, Chewy had. Uh, great earnings, had great earnings, came into rising support. You can see it, it held. Now, next couple of days, put you know, put this on your watch. You know, if this thing starts taking out our uh, earnings highs, this thing looks pretty good. Uh, look at a name like Box, right? Not a lot of names that we trade, but that's kind of what happens when stocks go sideways as a group that you're trading. It's very, very tough to find value in them. You got to look for other value. Look at Box. This is the highest close in this whole formation reclaim the 50-day moving average, stop today at the Bollinger Band. If it starts reclaiming back that Bollinger, this thing could you know, could go higher as well. So there's definitely names that are alternative names uh, to the mega cap space. Uh, again, I try my darnest to stay patient uh, and get the, the mega cap trades. Today, I traded some video on a balance. I traded Tesla on a natural pivot, only gave it a little bit of cash flow. But the point is, don't deviate from what you feel comfortable. If you don't trade NVIDIA, don't look at NVIDIA. If you don't trade GameStop, don't look at GameStop. The point is, what's great about being an individual trader is there's a million ways to put stakes in the freezer. There's no such thing as right. There's no such thing as wrong. It's the comfort level, right? Whatever you're comfortable with, that's the right trade. If you're not comfortable in a specific stock and you hear social media all about it, it's social media. Just you know, reference social media as pigeons, right? Pigeons... Uh, you know, pigeons of the park fighting for the same crumb of bread. That's what, you know, that's what social media is. Stay in your lane, whatever your lane is, options, futures, small caps, mid caps, large caps, bottle caps, baseball caps, stay in your lane. And you'll notice the longer you're in your lane and you start to omit things that are causing you noise and causing you distractions, that's when you start getting much more in control of your trading. And it's okay to have a quiet session. It's okay not to trade everything in sight because the most important thing, especially for a new trader, is keeping your solvency card. Get to the next trading day. Once you get to the next trading day, that means you have an extra day of screen time under your belt. And the longer you continue to trade, the longer you continue to see screen time day in, day out, things will eventually start to click. Okay, The longer you're watching something, eventually it's going to get into your big, beautiful brain and then you start omitting things that are not helpful on your journey. So let's talk about uh, tomorrow. Uh, let's talk about today, excuse me. Um, you know, we talked about some of these names. Again, you can see not a big premium session as far as beta, but the one beta name that woke up actually woke up. So uh, NEXT needs to build. I think we talked about NEXT briefly on the, the weekend video. 730 needs to build. Not a big move yet, but... Uh, this is the highest close in the whole formation. Got above 7.30. Uh, this is the highest close now. Reclaim the 10-day moving average. Looks like a potential uh, $8 uh, run. Uh, ENVX never got to 11.40. Uh, Apple had a nice move here. Uh, 193 needs to confirm. Uh, short term, 200 and uh, 195 calls coming in. So it took out this whole 
193 channel went all the way up to uh, 95. Nice move. You know, definitely, definitely nice move on Apple. Uh, Rivian, uh, Reddit never confirmed to the downside. Rivian confirmed on the close. Uh, 1125 uh, needs to build. Again, you can see the lack of value in beta names for the exception of Apple. But this is now Rivian, the highest close uh, in the whole formation. Speaking of highest close in the whole formation, I've been swinging Mother Goose, Canada Goose now for like freaking two weeks. It's the slowest stock ever, but this is still building upon the earnings highs. I would love to see some option flow come into the name because this thing is just ready to have an expansion date. It just feels like it's nickeling and diming you, but this is a, still a nice looking chart. Nice grind. Hopefully one day just has an expansion uh, channel. Uh, Rivian we just talked about. And Arm. Arm had a nice move. Arm uh, 126 needs to confirm. Here was Arm. It took out the 126. Traded all the way up to 130. It still has... This is still the highest close in the whole formation. Still has room to about 133. Uh, Tesla stopped right at the 182.60s again. So the point is that Tesla is still on, um, I don't want to use the word life support, but it's still going uh, sideways. So that's it. That's it, guys. Uh, every single day, remember, you don't need to create miracles. Uh, you don't need to uh, try to recreate the wheel. Uh, coming into today's session, we knew going to today, there is going to be an element of chop. That's exactly what we had. So when you have uh, no expectations, you have no disappointments, and the most important part is you are mentally prepared for what the day has in store. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. And I will see you all tomorrow.